Yum, yum! Hello, Pascal here. Let's talk about mesh ops inside Modo. When mesh ops were introduced, I think it was in version 10, I looked at the first demos and I thought, well, all right, I don't do any industrial design. I don't need to add a bevel or change something afterwards. It's not really for me. It's actually a lot of fun to use with the animations from Marvelous Designer. And I give you several simple examples. It's what I've just been playing with and hopefully will give you some ideas. So for instance, here I have a very simple animation, a cloth just falling on a cylinder. The MDD is added as a uh, deformer, but it's also added inside the tool pipe for the procedural modeling. So there are a lot of things you can do with it. The first thing you would notice is that this mesh is perfect quads. So we are here inside Marvelous Designer and have a simple um, square here. And if you look at the mesh, once you've decided it's all quads, it is all quads, but it's like a procedural quads, so not very clean. And the way to fix that is to add internal lines. So you right click on the line, offset this internal line, and then add nine like this. Okay. And repeat the same thing with the vertical, the horizontal, sorry, lines. So 109. And now your mesh is perfect. So the lines are used uh, to create folds. So if you uh, select them, you can change the strength of the fold here. I make it very obvious. And the angle changes the direction of the fold. So if I make it like this, if I go very high, let me go back to this shading. You get this effect. So that's what you would do to create uh, you know, ski jackets and things like that. But in our case we don't want to actually use the folds inside Marvel's Designer. We just want to use the use them as guides. So we're gonna keep them here. Put the fold strength to zero and the fold angle to 180, which is straight. So inside Modo, we have the mesh imported and the uh, MDD file attached to it. So we have the animation. And I created this. And it's very simple. I selected the edges that I had in Marvelous Designer. So all those. I used the operator edge to curves. I made sure the line was a curve per edge. So I have one curve per edge. Then selected all the polygons and deleted them. added a material tag to it. On the base mesh, I made sure here that I had curve render activated. Then I needed to uh, add the knots. So I 
just created a little uh, knot, a mesh, like this, made with two curves, also two render curves, and a replicator. And originally, it's based on vertex, so I had the knots on all the the points, including the the end points here, and which I didn't want. So I duplicated my net here, and I deleted on that one. I deleted all the vertices on the outside. I used that as the mesh source to drive the replicator. And I got the beautiful net. Let me show you something else, because it's cool. Same mesh, I just created a series of smooth shifts and deleted the polygons I didn't want to see. And then animated the distance, so it's separated at the beginning and assembled at the end. Wow! Here is another very cool thing you can do. And we're going to use UV Transform. UV Transform lets you project a mesh onto another using the UV space as a reference. So I have this procedural star here. I'm going to project onto the moving cloth, which I renamed UVT here. So very simple. I like simple things. Add operator, tap UV Transform, target mesh. UVT target get UV map texture and it's not perfect but easy to fix. So the UV space is represented here with this square and what you need to do is check this box use source transform and your star is projected onto the moving cloth. You notice here that it's actually flipped so simple way to fix that is to take the star and then flip it by scaling it in Z. And now it's in the right place. So the cool thing is that you can actually hide the source mesh and keep your animation. And what you can even do is before the UV transform, add another operator. And we're going to use array. I'm going to hide the UV transform to see what we're doing here. So we need to project on the Z axis. So unfold the tool pipe to reveal the array generator options. And we want four in X, four in Y, and only one in Z. And then for the distance, we're going to do 0 0.2, 200 millimeters in Y and minus 200 in, no, 200 millimeters in X and minus 200 in Y. And now, when we activate UV transform, we have our stars here. And same thing, you can hide the cloth and get the whole animation. And you can add a bevel to those stars, you can animate them onto the mesh as long as you stay within the UV space. Tons of things you can do. Here's one more example using the duck float tutorial that I made a few weeks ago. I just added on the float, same thing with internal lines using the circle, I just added two circles, three actually, onto the, the mesh here. 
and then re-exported the animation. And so you see inside Modo, I have used that geometry that was created thanks to the internal lines to create this valve, which is just a series of bevels of that uh, area here. And same thing when I play the animation, the inflating of the duck or deflating, everything follows, just amazing. You can use the UV transform also to project a valve. Now this deformation is a little extreme in this case, but it's the same principle. Just create your mesh, project it onto the other one, make sure in this case that you don't have a wrap to surface, otherwise it's going to be flattened onto the surface. And you may also want to just edit the mesh, which is something you can't do without uh, the procedural modeling. So let's look at this thing, for instance. And I would like to add a seam here and one here. And these are things you can do with a marvelous designer, but sometimes you want the flexibility, you want the animation, and also you might need too many polygons, very dense mesh to get the result that you want. Whereas here, I can just select the edges, add an edge extrude, and I'll do two millimeters and two, two millimeters. And here you go. And then you can select this edge, make it a curve, render the curve. You can really extrude polygons, bevel them. It's really uh, very, very flexible and uh, a lot of fun to use. So I would really recommend that you explore all the tools. There are tons of things you can play with. It's not magic, so some of them are going to have some limitations, but just have fun with it. Bye. Smooth shifts 